Good morning, my beloved Christ Point family. We want to welcome you all back once again this Sunday, 10th of April, 2022, for our 10 a.m. service. For those of you who are tuning in for the very first time, good morning and welcome to Christ Point Church, Melbourne, the place to belong. My name is Carlos Corrado. Thank you and bless you for allowing us to come to the sanctuary of your homes once again to share God's word with you. We at Christ Point Church, Melbourne, are here to share the good news of salvation to everyone beginning here at home in the beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia, all the way to the ends of the world. The church is not a building, but a group of people who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior and have a true relationship with the Father in heaven and are a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. We at Christ Point Church, Melbourne, want to be able to help people connect to their destiny. And their destiny is our Savior, Jesus Christ. We then want to equip them to go out into the world and connect others to their destiny also by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Word of God tells us this in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It is for me again a blessing and a privilege to be able to share God's Word with you. I am so blessed to be leading Christ Point Melbourne and to be a part of its amazing growth and journey. One of our highlights is the fact that last week we began with our Spanish-speaking service at 9 a.m. Now, this is a major blessing for us here at Christ Point, as we pray that it is also for our Spanish-speaking community in Australia and the world. Now, we're now preaching God's Word every Sunday without fail at 9 a.m. in Spanish. At 10 a.m. at 6.30 p.m., we have our regular services in English. We pray that you can join us as we celebrate this milestone. Now, I want to encourage you to keep up to date with us via the Christ Point Church Melbourne app free for your iOS and Android devices, such as mobile phones, tablets, supported laptops, and PCs. Remember also to follow us on Facebook, as well as to subscribe to our YouTube channels. Please remember to share us with your family and friends as we continue to share the gospel to the ends of the earth. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the year, this 2022, the focus of our church is growth. And I am not talking about a growth in size nor numbers, but rather spiritual growth within every single one of us. Pastor Peter Antonio and I shall be covering messages over the next few months which will look at several aspects of the life of Jesus which will allow and help us to grow spiritually. Now this 2022, we at Christ Point Church Melbourne want to be able to share with you the person of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the purpose of Jesus, and the presence of the Christ who lived, who died, and who victoriously rose from the dead. So I encourage you to stay with us as we hear what God has in store for us this morning. As always, we shall continue with our Bible studies every second Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. I encourage you to join Pastor Peter and Tony as he takes us through an in-depth study of the Holy Scriptures via our second channel, Christ Point Midweek, which you can find via our app. You can also join us every second Wednesday night to our Connect service at 7.30 p.m., where we shall be covering practical and biblical principles to live a more holy life during these trying and unprecedented times. Our Wednesday Night Connect services are available via Facebook and the official Christ Point Melbourne app. Remember also to join us every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. to watch our segment, The Sermon of the Week. Then on Fridays at 7.30 p.m., we will have El Sermon de la Semana, or The Sermon of the Week, in Spanish, only via Facebook and the official Christ Point Church Melbourne app. We ask you to keep praying with and for us as we continue with our mission of pointing people to Christ. The leadership team of our church is still actively working on finding a building where you can join us for praise and worship, as well as to share a good time in fellowship. Now, God willing, in the very near future, we can share with you the news that we have found a place to call home here at Christ Point Church, Melbourne. And we ask that you pray with and for us as we continue on this mission. In other news, Easter is fast approaching, and we want to remind you of our activities here at Christ Point Church, Melbourne, the place to belong. Friday, the 15th of April at 7.30 p.m., we shall celebrate Good Friday. Now, Sunday, the 17th of April at 10 a.m. at 6.30 p.m., we will celebrate our Easter Sunday with Pastor Peter and Tony. That same Sunday, the 17th at 9 a.m., we will have and celebrate our Easter service in Spanish. Now, we pray that you can join us and be a part of Christ Point Ministries. Now, I want you to close your eyes, bow your head. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, Lord of Heaven, we thank you for the blessing of life and health that you give us. Thank you for allowing us to have the opportunity to be in your presence again today, even if it is through the use of modern technology, through YouTube, through Facebook, and the official Christ Point Melbourne app. We come together with the unity of our faith in you and you alone. We ask, Father, that you soften our hearts so that your word can penetrate to the deepest part of it. May you clear our ears so that we may be able to hear your voice clearly. 
May you steal our minds as to think and focus only on you. May we always grow in maturity and strength through your word. May we understand that you have called every single one of us to serve you and you alone. Bless us beyond measure and fill us with your peace. Give us a desire in our hearts to serve you more and more with our hearts, with our minds, and also with our hands. Father, we want to surrender our all to you today. May we have the strength to stand tall in the face of conflict and the courage to speak out our voice even when we're scared. May we have the humility to follow you above all else and the passion to live our lives for you and you alone. May we seek to know you more and more and dismiss the gravitational pull of this world. May we embrace your love, your grace, and your forgiveness. May we reject darkness and embrace your light. May we be brave enough to step up to your calling of us. Soften our hearts so that we be able to choose faith in you over the fear of failure. May we be drenched in your blessings and engulfed by your love. We pray again that you help us to grow this year, to grow in faith and to grow in commitment to you. This morning we come to you with our problems and ask you for your guidance. We come with our weaknesses and ask you for your strength. We come with our needs and ask for your fullness. We pray and think of those who are with ill health, those who are struggling with cancer, with kidney failure, with intestinal issues, COVID-19 and its variants, those who are suffering from their eyesight and other complex medical issues. Father, you know every single one of them by name. Bless them and heal them according to your will. Give them the peace to know that you are in full control and that no matter the situation, you will be honored and glorified. As to any situation, Jesus is the answer. We pray that you remain with us as we hear from the Holy Scriptures. I ask, Father, that you put words into my mouth this morning that become a blessing to those who hear them. May it be the Holy Spirit using me as a conduit to convey the message that you, O oh God, have for everyone listening. May those who have ears hear your message this morning. We pray this and a whole lot more in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Stay with us as we continue with praise and worship. Darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say. 
remember to download the Crestpoint Church Melbourne app, free from the App Store and Google Play. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. And visit our website. Christ Point Church Melbourne, the place to belong. Sometimes a reboot is what we need to get things back on track. Sometimes a reboot is what we need to get things back on track. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our Sunday service here at Christ Point Church, Melbourne, the place to belong. As always, it is for me a blessing and a privilege to be able to share God's Word with you. I want to remind you to keep up to date with us via the Christ Point Church, Melbourne app, free for your Apple devices and also your Android ones. Remember to follow us on Facebook as well as to subscribe to our YouTube channels. So please remember also to share us with your family and friends as we continue to share the gospel of Jesus to the ends of the earth. This 2022, the focus of our church is growth, not in size nor numbers, but rather spiritual growth. Over the last few weeks, we have spoken about the growth of Jesus, His baptism, how He overcame temptation, and other aspects of His life. Over the next few months, we shall continue covering messages that will oversee the different aspects of Jesus, which will allow us and help us to grow spiritually. Through our theme on growth for the year, we want to be able to share with you the person of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the purpose of Jesus and the presence of the Christ who lived, who died, and who victoriously rose from the dead. Over the last two years, we at Christ Point Church Melbourne have done two major series on the church. Now, we did the first series of six weeks on the church entitled Ecclesia, and then we did a follow-up series entitled The DNA of the Church. I highly recommend that you go through them So, if you want to know more or more in depth in this topic. 
So let us read the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13 to 18, and the Word of God tells us, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, He asked? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Let us put this portion of Scripture into context this morning. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Who do you say I am? These two questions were at the heart of Jesus' desire for His own disciples to comprehend the truth of His deity and also of His coming death on the cross. The theoretical beliefs of others about Jesus, a fanatic like John the Baptist, for instance, or a powerful preacher like Elijah, or one of the other prophets, these were not nearly as important as each disciple's personal belief of who he was or who he is. This is also true for every single person and every single believer, every single one of us. Ultimately, the question that matters is, who do you think Jesus is? The Apostle Peter understood that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. John 6:69 6, states the following, Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He also states the following in chapter 11, verse 27. She, Martha, said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Again, we read in the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 37, the following. Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And we also find this in 1 John, chapter 4, 15. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And returning to our passage, Jesus used a clever play on words to teach the disciples about the church. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Matthew 16, 18. When Jesus referred to Peter by name Petros, he used the word for a small movable stone like a pebble. But the word rock, Petra, means an immovable foundation. Jesus was saying that the church would not be built on Peter, the pebble, but rather upon Christ, the massive rock and chief cornerstone. And we read this in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 20, the following. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. The cornerstone is the most important stone in a building. It is laid first, and it is the one to ensure that the building is square and stable. As the chief cornerstone, Jesus ensures the stability of the whole system of salvation. The world would know nothing about Jesus or the church without the writings of the apostles and the prophets who laid the foundations for the Christian faith. The message of salvation by grace through faith is not new. It is the same message taught implicitly in the Old Testament by the New Testament apostles. This morning's message is simple. Jesus founded His church. During Jesus' Galilean ministry, He took His disciples on several retreats away from the thronging crowds. The purpose of these retreats was twofold. First, the disciples needed physical rest. Second, Jesus desired to instruct them more thoroughly in order that they would carry on His work after He left. One of those retreats was as far away as Caesarea Philippi, quite a number of miles north of the Sea of Galilee and not far from Mount Hermon, the probable site of the Transfiguration, which occurred a few days later. Jesus had been with the disciples for some time now, and He wanted to know, He wished to know how much they understood concerning His nature. His first question was a general one. He probably was not as much interested in knowing what the multitudes thought of Him as He was in knowing how the disciples felt and how they interpreted the ideas of the masses. The first question paid way for a second, more intimate question. Simon Peter had a way of speaking first whether he knew the right answer or not. This time, however, he was spot on. He hit the nail on the head. He was right. Jesus assured him 
that his answer had not come on the basis of human knowledge, but rather it was revealed to him by the Father in heaven and for a particular purpose. Jesus used this as the basis on which to instruct his disciples more clearly and to give them the foundation for evangelization. This morning, I want to touch on three main points. The first of those is the foundation of the church. Peter said that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. The word Christ means Messiah or anointed one. And this means that Simon Peter was recognizing Jesus as the one whom God had promised to send to his people. But Peter said more than that. He identified the Messiah as the Son of God. Now, there was not complete agreement among all Jews concerning the coming Messiah. There was not even a unanimous understanding among the people that the Messiah would necessarily be equaled with the Father. As there are various ideas and understandings of the scripture today concerning the second coming of Jesus, there were various ideas concerning the first coming of Jesus based on interpretations of the Old Testament passages. Simon Peter's statement, however, rang loud and clear. Jesus of Nazareth was the Son of God. Implicit in his statement are all the later teachings we have concerning the complete equality of the Son with the Father and the complete deity of the Savior. This was indeed a marvelous confession, one that we must also confess. Jesus said that he would build his church on the fact that he is the Son of God. There have been various understandings as to the exact meaning of Jesus' words. As I mentioned before, some have felt that Jesus made a play on words in his statement. Peter means rock in the Greek language. Some have suggested the difference in the two Greek words used for rock in the text that it means that Jesus was saying that Peter was a movable pebble type of rock. But he, but Jesus, is the solid rock that cannot be moved. There may be a basis in the text for such an interpretation. Others have felt that Jesus meant that he would build his church on Peter's confession, or even on Peter's faith, and therefore on the faith of others who would come along and after Peter in acceptance of this truth. Whatever the shade of interpretation we give the confession, one thing is certain. The church of Jesus Christ is built on the fact of his complete deity and his complete equality with God the Father. Let me repeat this because this is very important. The church of Jesus Christ is built on the fact of his complete deity and his equality with God the Father. Jesus was born of a virgin and possessed a unique nature. And although he identified himself with man, he was nevertheless God in the flesh. You may remember we spoke about this in our first message of the year called Growth 2022. If you missed it, I encourage you to watch it. So as I just mentioned, Jesus was born of a virgin and possessed a unique nature. And although he identified himself with man, he was nevertheless God in the flesh. The church is built on this truth. And when any local congregation minimizes it, the truth of scripture is compromised. Unless a church believes on the deity of Christ, it will seek to win the loss in vain. When a church falters on this truth, it is not long before the church is compromising in other areas. It is very important that every minister, every pastor, every preacher, and every teacher maintain the fundamental truth about Jesus, and that is that He is the Son of God. The second point that I want to highlight this morning is the nature of the church. Now, the word translated church comes from a Greek word, ekklesia, and that means literally the called out or the gathering of those summoned, and this is the true nature of Christ's church. It is composed of those who have been called out from sin in the world and have been made new people in Jesus Christ. The same word is translated as assembly in the book of Acts chapter 19 verse 41 where it states, After he had said this, he dismissed the assembly. The church consists of born-again believers. When Jesus spoke of his church in our main passage, he was speaking, of course, in terms of a concept. There were no buildings or church organizations as we know them today. We at Crosspoint Church Melbourne say this very fact every time we begin our services. The church is not a building, but a group of people who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior and have a true relationship with the Father in heaven and are a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. It was later that people gathered themselves together in local congregations and constituted assemblies known as churches. In the New Testament, we read of the church of Corinth or the church at Ephesus or the church at Galatia. 
These churches were visible bodies and consisted of born-again people. The ideal for our churches today is that every member of each local church or assembly be born-again Christians. No one should be admitted to membership in a local body unless he or she has a genuine experience of regeneration. There have been times in the history of Christianity when people were required to tell of their personal experience with Christ in salvation before they were admitted to membership in the local church. Unfortunately, some congregations have been more lax and have failed many times to require or even emphasize the new birth experience as a prerequisite to membership in their local church. If we follow such a practice, we lose our influence with non-believers. Now, there are a few places in the New Testament where the church is spoken of in a general institutional sense rather than as a local body. Now, this is similar to the way in which we speak of the Christian home in Australia and other Western countries. Each Christian home in Australia and the Western countries are a separate entity even though we speak of the Christian home in our nations. Likewise, churches today are local, visible bodies even though we sometimes speak of the church in a general sense. Some people speak of the church universal, meaning all saved people regardless of their affiliation or lack of it with a local congregation. There is sometimes spoken of as the universal church or the Catholic church. Protestants today speak of the Holy Catholic Church, while the Roman Catholic Church speaks of the church as the Roman Catholic Church. The expression Kingdom of God may also be used to refer to the universal body of saved believers. Many people believe this is a better expression to describe the invisible body of believers. Whatever terminology we use to describe the church, we should remember that the church is composed of people who have had a personal experience with Jesus. The words called out signify that those who comprise Christ's church are different from the world. Christ has forgiven their sins and their lives should reflect this change. The third and final point that I want to touch on this morning is of the promise to the church. Jesus gave a great assurance to his church when he said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. And we find this in the book of Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Many have seen this passage as Jesus promised that the church will never go out of existence. It will remain until his second coming. This may be what Jesus meant in this passage, but there is another possible interpretation. When the church goes on the offensive, the forces of hell will not be able to withstand the onslaught of Christian people banded together in militant action. In other words, the church is not on a defensive. The church is marching under the orders of Christ. The combined forces of evil will not be able to resist this onward march. This interpretation magnifies the conquering power of the church under the leadership of the Holy Spirit in today's world. We at Christ Point Church Melbourne also say the following statement every time we have a service throughout the week. We at Christ Point Melbourne want to be able to help people connect to their destiny, and their destiny is our Savior, Jesus Christ. We then want to equip them to go out into the world and connect others to their destiny also by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. How wonderful it is to make the decision to serve God no matter what. I want to ask you the following. Are you a member of Christ's church? Have you had an experience with Him that has caused a transformation in your life? If so, you should belong to a local congregation and invest your talents and gifts in the work of Christ through that church. Now, no church is perfect. This is because churches are made up of people and no people are without fault. Your life will be better, however, if you will find a place of service in a local congregation with fellow believers. Joining a local church does not bring personal salvation, Salvation comes only through an experience with the Savior, Jesus Christ. There is great value, however, in being associated with other Christians in a local body. If you're not a church member, will you give serious consideration to belonging to a church? This is, of course, on the condition that you have been saved. We at Christ Point Church Melbourne are soon to begin face-to-face -face services in the Caroline Springs area and would love for you to join us. Now, in the coming weeks, we shall give you more information on the exact location and also times of worship. Now, God willing, we shall begin with a Spanish-speaking service, then we'll have our regular English services. So please watch this space and stay tuned for more information to come. After that brief announcement, let me continue. If you have not been saved, your first step is to receive Jesus as your personal Savior. 
Now, those who are church members should give loyalty to the church where they belong. To move from one church to another Sunday after Sunday does not deepen one's life nearly as much as finding a place of service in one church and being loyal to that church. Now, this does not mean that there are not legitimate times when we have to leave the church or go to other churches or visit other churches. On the whole, however, our loyalty should be to the congregation where we hold our membership. Jesus wants you to be a part of His church, but first He wants you to be a part of Him and that He becomes a part of you. So come to Jesus today. If you have not let Jesus Christ come into your life to be your shepherd, Savior, Lord, King, to be your friend, today is the perfect day to do so. Let Him become the Lord of your life today. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, the following, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. If you're not yet one of His disciples, open the door of your heart and let Him begin His good work in you today. Let Him have command over your life. Now, would you like to fully surrender your all to Him today? God has given us a new day, a new opportunity, a new chance, if you will, this morning to be obedient and not rebellious. God wants to continue building His church and He wants you to be a part of it. Yes, you. Going to heaven has nothing to do with how good you are or what religion you belong to or even what church you attend. The Bible tells us clearly how we may know 100% for sure that we're going to go straight to heaven when we die. There are four simple truths that we must understand. The first of those is the fact that we have all sinned. The book of Romans tells us this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God's word tells us that we're all sinners by nature and by choice. We have all broken God's holy laws and we stand guilty and condemned before Him. No one is perfect. Which brings me to our truth number two. There is punishment for our sins. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23 reminds us, For the wages of sin is death. Now because God is holy, He must punish sin. The punishment that God requires for sin is death. There are two deaths mentioned in the Bible. There's the physical death and the spiritual death, where we must be punished for our sins by being separated from God in the lake of fire, and no good works nor religion can save us. Every unsaved sinner is headed for hellfire. But you know what? There is hope for you and I. Which brings me to our third truth, which is the fact that Jesus Christ took our punishment. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 8 tells us, But God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. John 3.16 tells us of the love of God for us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The Lord Jesus, God's only Son, came to earth to save us from our sins. He died on the cross for our sins and rose again three days later. He took our punishment upon Himself so that we might go to heaven. And this brings me to our fourth and final truth. We can be saved right now. Yes, you and I. Salvation is in the person of Jesus Christ. No church, no religion, no good works, no baptism, communion, nor confession can save us. Jesus Christ alone is our Savior. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 13 states, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to finish this morning by asking you the following. Have you accepted Christ into your heart? Have you accepted Him as your Lord and Savior? Today is a great day to allow Jesus into your heart. He came to die on a wooden cross for my sin, for your sins, and those of the world. You can be saved right now if you will admit your sin and guilt and also repent. Turn from your sin and whatever you're currently trusting and turn to Jesus. Believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross for your sins and rose again from the grave on the third day. Call and ask Jesus to forgive you and save you right now. So don't go home this morning without the best gift that you'll ever get. And that is the gift of salvation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ through His death and resurrection. So look, look on to Him, my friend. Look on to God Almighty. Look on to Jesus and you will be saved. If you want to take home this gift of salvation today, open your heart to Jesus and repeat with me this prayer. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I know you died on the cross for me and that you rose again on the third day defeating death, defeating the grave once and for all. I now turn away from my sin and ask you to forgive me. I invite you into my heart and life, and I now trust you as Savior, Lord, and King, and I will follow you no matter what. Jesus, thank you for saving me today. In your name I pray this. 
Amen. If you made this prayer with me, let me welcome you to the family of God. If you want to know more about Jesus, please make contact with us. We'd love to help you and equip you in your new journey with God. So I encourage you to make contact with us via the official Christ Point Church Melbourne app, free for your Apple devices and also your Android ones. You can also make contact with us via Facebook, YouTube and our website. I'm Carlos Corrado, Senior Pastor and Founder of Christ Point Church Melbourne. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you. See you again tonight at 6.30 p.m. Close your eyes. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, thank you once again for allowing us to hear your holy word. Thank you that you make all things new for us and the opportunities that you give us to get to know you more and more through your holy word. Thank you for reminding us how much we need you and how much we need to rely on your presence to fill us every single day. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your only begotten Son to earth to die for our sins. We thank you for reminding us that there is no other name on earth nor heaven that surpasses your glorious name. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and generosity in giving us all that we need and beyond. Thank you, Father, as you remind us that no matter the situation, Jesus is the answer. We thank you, Father, for you forgive us our sins and transgressions and want to release us from our guilt. Thank you, Father, for the strength that you give us to face opposition in life. We pray for everyone who is watching and listening to us. Bless them abundantly, O Lord. Help us to praise you, Father. Help us to trust you. Help us to serve you, Lord. Help us to share your love and mercy with others. Help us to glorify you. And this week, may we live for you and you alone. Father, use us to make your word be fully known throughout the world beginning with our family and friends and the people that we encounter. May the Father's hand keep you from stumbling. The footprints of Jesus give you the strength and the confidence to follow. And the fire of the Holy Spirit keep you warm and safe in your walk with God today, tomorrow, and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The preacher has finished his message. It is now the time for you to make a decision to come to the Father through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you want to accept the Lord Jesus into your heart today, repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I know you died on the cross for me and that you rose again on the third day, defeating death, defeating the grave once and for all. I now turn away from my sin and ask you to forgive me. I invite you into my heart and life, and I now trust you as Savior, Lord and King, and I will follow you no matter what. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me today. In your name I pray this. Amen. If you made this prayer with me, let me welcome you to the family of God. If you want to know more about Jesus, please make contact with us. We want to help you and equip you in your new journey with God. Also to help you go out into the world and continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others who do not know Him yet. I encourage you to contact us via the official Christ Point Church Melbourne app, free for your Apple devices and for your Android ones. You can also make contact with us via Facebook, YouTube and or our website. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you. See you next week.